once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis a visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books of seas of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore. here forevermore, and the silken sad uncertain, rustling of each purple curtain, thrill me, fill me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to stole the beating when my heart is still repeating, to some visitor entreating, entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating, entrance at my chamber door, this it is, Nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating, then no longer. Sir, said I or madam, truly, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber. I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I open wide the door. Darkness there and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering. Long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming. Dreams no mortals ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken. And the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word for no This I whispered, and the back hole murmured back the word Lenore. Merely this, nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before, surely, said I, surely that is let me see then what the rat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of Alice just above my chamber door. Perched and sat, and nothing more, than the semi bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore, quoth the raven nevermore. Much I marveled this, ungainly felt to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little mean, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bus above his chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bus, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. 
Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken, by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed foster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bus and door, then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy, but to fancy thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, till the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er. She shall press at nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretched, I cried, thy God how the lengthy by these angels he descend thee. Respite, respite and depolve from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind in the pentha, and forget this lost Lenore, with the raven nevermore. Prophets, said I, thing of evil, prophets still if bird or devil, whether tempt or sent, or whether tempest tossed the year ashore. Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly I am poor. Is there, is there bomb and kill it? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell the soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall cost up a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign in parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked of starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonium shore. Leave no black plume as a token. Of that lie thy soul had spoken, Leave my loneliness unbroken, Quit the bust above my door, Take thy beak from out my heart, And take thy form from off my door, Quit the raven nevermore. And the raven never flitting, Still is sitting, still is sitting, On the pallid bust of palace, Just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.